Hello, I am Miles Cup, an instructor in Crown Martial Arts and the principal curator of the exhibit that was open at California State University Fullerton, Historical European Martial Arts, A Lost Legacy. I would have really enjoyed if I could take everyone through the exhibit, show them some of the really interesting and fascinating things that we had on display, as well as hopefully pique some curiosity to do more research into historical European martial arts. Let's take a look around. So here we are at the first part of our exhibit, in which we introduce to the viewer of the exhibit what is historical European martial arts and take them through the history of HEMA and the efforts to rediscover it. We begin with an original first edition of Alfred Hutton's copy of Cold Steel and we discuss the efforts to begin the rediscovery of HEMA in the 19th century undertaken by Alfred Hutton and Egerton Castle, moving into the Victorian resurgence and an interest in medievalism, as well as addressing some of the myths and misconceptions that have to do with did gunpowder end the sword? And we address that and we say, well, no, of course gunpowder didn't end the sword because the sword was used on the battlefields of Europe well into the 19th century and even the earliest days of World War I. Further along in the exhibit, we discuss the traditions of dueling. We discuss how duels with sharp swords were undertaken in France well into the 1920s and even the last duel in 1967 and the history associated with that. Then we move further along into the resurgence and rediscovery of manuscripts lost into museums, but how the study of HEMA couldn't go beyond that until the resurgence of the internet so that scans and translations and facsimiles could be shared widely across the ocean and it's not limited to museums and libraries and private collections any longer. Finally, in this particular case of the exhibit, we talk about the resurgence of HEMA and the beginning of the Medieval Swordsmanship Club at Cal State Fullerton, the founding of Cron Martial Arts, the founding of the HEMA Alliance, and the influence of Jason Taylor, who passed away from a battle of cancer in the year 2015. This next section of our exhibit, I like to consider the crown jewel. We have here a collection of both original and facsimile fencing treatises dated between the 14th and 19th centuries, graciously loaned to us by Brian Stokes of Scola San Marco. The first of these that we have is the Royal Armory's facsimile of the MS-133, the oldest known fencing manual. The next of these is the Flos Duolatorum, authored by Fiore de Liberi. This is the Pisani Dossi version of Fiore's work. Moving along into the 16th century, we have an original copy of Camillo de Gripa's landmark 1553 treatise that laid the foundations of geometric and mathematical theories in fencing. Further along, we have Diderot's Encyclopedia. This particular book is an original work that was taken from the encyclopedia. The pages were cut out and bound together only with the sections on fencing. On the wall, we have plates from Angelo's landmark work from the 18th century on small sword. And finally at the end here, we have a 19th century original from a fencing master in Paris. The book is called Le Cons de Armas, and it deals with fencing with the foil, with button tips, and represents a little bit of that shift away from the martial context of fencing into the sportive context of fencing. This small little section of our exhibit represents sort of the end of the historical progression that we have created at the beginning of our exhibit showing how fencing began in the earliest days as a martial art with real life applications with sharp swords and dueling and has evolved into the modern day Olympic sport fencing styles that is most known to the general public. This next section of our exhibit is probably the most visually impressive. This entire wall we have a collection of swords in a semi-chronological order dating from the earliest known ones for which we have documented sources from the MS-133, Sword and Buckler. Moving a little bit further along into the 14th century and beyond, we have a collection of long swords, both hand and a half and two-handed varieties, with complex hilts, modern synthetic trainers, as well as fetter replicas as would have been used in the 16th century. Coming a little bit further down, we have some steel and synthetic messers dating between the 15th and 17th centuries. And then we arrive into the 17th century and 18th century representing the Italian rapier arts and we also included a small discussion of the Spanish art of the Stresa. Coming further down, we have a synthetic version of a side sword slash rapier. 
and then we move further along into the 18th and 19th century styles of small sword as well as now in the 19th century single stick trainers used for saber and cutlass styles of fencing and then finally the very end of our exhibit crossed very proudly we have a collection of replica halberds spears partisans and pole axes in this case here in the center of our exhibit we have three very important and very well-known works in the foreground, we have a copy of Fabris's landmark 1606 fencing treatise, the first known uh, treatise published in Denmark to use copper plate engravings. The middle treatise is Achille Morozzo's Bolognese style fencing treatise based on the Bolognese tradition. And then at the, finally, at the end here, we have Talhofer's facsimile 1467, translated by Mark Rector, as well as a collection of wooden rondelles open to the same page at which rondelle fencing would have been shown. In this case right here, we have two very visually impressive facsimile fencing treatises from the 15th century. Over there we have Filippo Vadi's edition from the 15th century, and in front of me we have the extremely impressive Paulus Call facsimile, which deals with armored combat, longsword, messer, sword and buckler, dagger, and wrestling. Behind me in the case over there, we have the facsimile edition of Gerard Thibault's late 17th century copy dealing with the Destreza style of Spanish fencing. In addition to showing a lot of really cool fencing books, original and facsimile, as well as a lot of cool swords hanging on the walls, we also wanted to give a greater context for the way in which HEMA is relevant to the study of other things that people find interesting, like films and movies, the social structure of Europe, women in HEMA, armored combat, and mounted combat. Throughout this exhibit, we have several posters dealing with those topics, including a poster dealing with how does one even get into historical European martial arts and some local Southern California groups that practice it. I hope you enjoyed our walkthrough through Historical European Martial Arts, A Lost Legacy. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of the people who put so much work and effort into the exhibit, especially my co-curators, Brian Frick, Sarah Mountain, Lacey Haig, and Colin Farabee. Without their due diligence and effort, this exhibit would not have been anything more than a vision in my imagination. I'd also like to thank Brian Stokes, an alumni of California State University Fullerton, instructor in Scola San Marco, who generously and graciously loaned to us his original and facsimile fencing treatises. I would also like to thank South Coast Swords for the loaning of their equipment, as well as all of the other people who donated to our exhibit, whose names you can read on the website. Again, I'd like to thank everybody very much. Have a wonderful time.